Hello everybody, this is Sascha Knorr. I was very fortunate to be asked by Steinberg to make a demo track for their new orchestral sample library, Iconica, where I also was part of the recording team actually. In this video I'd like to give you some insights on the process of making this track. I will talk about the instruments and articulations of Iconica, the whole aspect of MIDI programming, and uh, how it all comes together with mixing, microphone perspectives, and so on. Okay, here we are right in Cubase in my MIDI project file. The way this is organized, you can see I have the Iconica Ensembles patches loaded up here, simply in an instrument track, and then I added MIDI tracks for the other channels. In this piece I used the Ensembles library basically as a writing and sketching tool to compose the whole piece and also lay out all the structures and different sections. And then I copied or played in again all the individual parts for the sections and players which you can see down here. So it starts obviously with the woodwinds, then we have the brass, percussion and finally the strings at the bottom. Those I have simply loaded as rack instruments here. Um, let me just open one of them. And as you can see, I have assigned different outputs for the different microphone positions of the room mics and the individual sections. Basically, in most of the instruments, I simply loaded everything instead of the surround mics and then assigned this to different outputs in Cubase. But we will get to this whole thing later, I think. So before we get right into it, I think it would be a good idea to just listen to the final mix of the piece as a whole um, to get an overview and a first impression. And then I will dissect it for you.
Okay, so this was the full mix of my track. For everything that follows now, I will deactivate all the audio processing and stuff so that you can hear the samples of Iconica as they sound right out of the box. I just have a little bit of external reverb going on here, but this is nothing too special for this purpose. You can just use every decent impulse response or algorithmic reverb that you have at your disposal. It's just adding a little bit of hall, concert hall, ambience, or whatever you like to call it. Okay, so now let's get right into it. The beginning really is a typical introduction. We have some atmospheric low strings and percussion going on, and then the low horns play the first little theme I have in this track. So I think what's quite interesting to point out in the beginning, this is a very basic aspect of MIDI programming that I use over the whole piece. And it's the use of the articulations that you have at your disposal to make a certain phrase. So let me just play this horn, this horn passage for you on its own. So those are only a couple of notes, but they use quite a bunch of different articulations. I start off with a little crescendo. Then the first short note is a staccato. And maybe I should also show you the A and Sonic player here so you can follow along. So for the sections and players, I basically loaded all the standard patches that come with the library so you always have a short notes patch a long notes patch and a dynamics patch uh, for the solo instruments i loaded the long notes two times because sometimes i need two individual voices or i want to use polyphonic legato and stuff so this is just the same patch loaded two times so I use those three different patches all the way through the whole piece. So we start with the dynamics patch and this short crescendo. Then we have a staccato of the short patch followed by two staccatissimo notes. And then we are again on the dynamics patch and I use the fortepiano articulation. It's a kind of, it's a kind of accent. And then with the sustain pedal pressed down shortly after that, I have another note which then key switches to the long swell. So, and those articulations combined give me that phrase. And then it's simply repeated. So now to give this introduction section some more colors and a little bit of excitement. I did some rather unusual percussion accents. This is just a pulsating opening with timpan timpani, bass drum and toms and then I have those accents. Those are wood blocks, some bongo and tambourine hits, and it's also also doubled in the strings. I have some 
violin and viola pizzicato going on. Just some dissonant atonal stuff. And in this string part, you also can hear that I make quite a lot use of the dynamic samples. I find them to be very expressive and effective in, in those cases where you need some, some kind of swells or crescendos or diminuendos. So you can, you can do this with the, with the sustained patch and the modular crossfade. But it sounds a lot, a lot more natural and nicer if you are able to employ the recorded dynamic samples. So that's basically it for the opening. Let me also show you the woodwinds in this section. It's just some low bass clarinet and contrabassoon here. Again, water piano on the bassoons. And the dynamic samples here in the woodwinds. Okay, so now we are done with the introduction. Let's move on to the next section. <laughs> This is the first little build up I have in this piece. Um, let's start by looking at the brass. I have the trombones going on with various short articulations and again the dynamics. Then for the repetition trumpets, the trumpet section coming in. And finally some, some chords from the trombones and tuba with some flourishes from horns and the trumpet leading into the next section. This little horn thingy here is basically a double voice of what's happening in the strings. Let's also listen to the strings here. I have tremolo octaves and then little little rhythmic accelerations from the violins. And let's also take a listen to the woodwinds in this section. Again, using a lot of short notes and dynamic samples to bring some energy into the performance. The next part of the track is a little choral or hymn that's mainly driven by the brass and the woodwind instruments. This is entirely done with the sustains or legato articulations of the particular instrument. Also in parts like this where the instruments really play different voices and for example the horns or trombones play two, three or even four voices, I assign those notes really only to the solo instruments of the library to get the most natural performance and also the most detailed sound. And as I said I used the sustains and legato articulations for this passage while a lot of mod wheel movement going on to shape the dynamic of the performance. This is just the brass. Let's 
let's also listen to the woodwinds. Those are clarinets and bassoons playing here, and I have this little this little flute and piccolo trill thingy going on, just as if those instruments uh, didn't get the change in music and pace and still want to continue with the music that was played before. And together with the brass, we really get a very warm and comforting sound. Then in the second part, some low strings come in. And they finally lead out of this section. So when the string chord just keeps sitting there, I have I have those flute shorts to just get into the new tempo again and speed up the whole thing. And I think this is a nice opportunity to talk a little bit about mixing and about microphone perspectives. So Iconica is recorded on a scoring stage with a multi-microphone recording setup in a, in a style that you also would use to record an actual orchestra. So there's a main Decca tree microphone and then various room microphones and AB stereo pair which is just above the Decca tree and also some surround room mics, which you can use to bring even more room ambience into your sound or in fact for the rear channels of a surround setup. Then we have an ORTF mic, which is basically a group microphone, but it's much more closer to the actual instruments than the Decca tree. And then we have various spot microphones or close microphones for the woodwinds. There's always a small diaphragm and a large diaphragm microphone. I decided to use the small microphones because I think they work quite nicely as spot microphones for an orchestral mix. If you want your woodwind instruments for a more exposed sound, you want a bigger sound out of it, you might be better off with the large diaphragm condenser microphone. So when it comes to creating the sound stage, creating the room impression and, and the actual sound of your virtual orchestra, I think that the microphone positions are by far the most important tool that you can use. And even generally speaking, I think that level and panorama are the most important mixing tools anyway. So I think especially in, in orchestral music or in a virtual orchestra track like this one, it's maybe about 90% of the final mix that is determined by the balancing of the microphone positions and the instruments and their panorama, so their positioning within the stereo field. Every other tools that you can use like EQs, compressor, saturation and even reverb are, in my opinion, really just the icing on the cake. You have to get a good and convincing sound just with level balancing and panorama, I think, at least when we talk about a more pristine natural impression of an orchestra uh, as it sounds in real life. When we get to hybrid music with more electronic elements or you have close-up vocals, guitars or whatever, then those ratios might shift a bit in one or the other direction. And just to give you some examples on, on how I used those tools in this track, in this little part where we have the string chord, I raise the close microphones of the flutes a bit to put some emphasis on their part. So if you listen now to it, you, you really can hear how the woodwinds 
come slightly closer to the listener. You don't want to overdo automation things like this. You don't want this automation right in the face of the of the listener. Should be a bit sneaky or subtle. So just to put a little highlight on on a section like this. There we had the bassoons introduce the second theme of the track. And now we get to a section uh, where the strings introduce this C sharp minor melody out of the two themes that are introduced before. Just the accompaniment for the woodwinds. Because in this section I have the repetition of this theme with three part parallel motion woodwinds. This is English horn on top and then clarinets and bassoons below. Here you can also see with the key switches that I try to utilize all the different short notes that we have available. Let me play this again with all instruments and you can follow along in the Hellion Sonic how it's switching. <laughs> again there are also the forte piano dynamics used for the longer accented notes here. Then we get to another brass driven section where the second motive is developed a bit further before we get back to that theme in the strings. Let me just play the brass here. Those are tuba, euphonium and trombones on those pedal pedal root notes and harmonies and then horns and trombones. One thing I I did in this section and also in other in other parts of the track, we have the for example for the horns, we have a solo horn and we have the ensemble with four horns. And to get an even bigger sound or some variation into the sound, sometimes I also double those. So I have the solo horn play the same part as the horn ensemble with slightly different MIDI data because I uh, performed it two times. In this section, for example, this is just the solo horn. And, and this is the ensemble. And then together, it's a richer sound. Okay, now we get to a part for the string orchestra. Again, they introduce this C sharp minor theme. And then I have a little polyphonic game going on between the different sections. So we start with the we start with the cello, then the violas come in, then the second violins, first violins, and finally the double basses come in. In this section there's another little trick I like to use with the strings in Iconica. We also have different short notes. We have staccato and spiccato. And I find that for short little runs like this, this bottom, that the combination of the spiccato for the first note and the staccato for the following notes in the little run give a quite convincing uh, result. 
The Spiccato has a more pointy attack and is obviously played very short and percussive. The staccato also is played very short, but due to the different bow stroke it is, it has a slightly softer attack. So I thought that those two can be combined really well to do little uh, phrases like this. This works up and down in any direction and also in any register. <laughs> Okay, let's let's just take the first violins here and let me deactivate all those switches. Let's just say okay, I have this phrase but I just play it with the spiccato. Then it would sound like this. This is also a possibility for doing phrases like this. So you can really hear that it's disjointed notes, which is fine if you want something like this. But I wanted to emulate the sound of a single stroke run. And for example, for the violins, we also have the playable runs articulation, which I used in another section and uh, which has its own right and sound. But for something like this, I really prefer this combination of the two different short articulations. Let's, let's listen again to the difference. So when working with orchestra sample libraries like Iconica, if we are trying to emulate music in a way it should be performed by an orchestra, I believe we are always doing an approximation of what actual players would play. That means for me I think about how I can use and combine all the available articulations in the library in a way that gives me the best possible approximation of a particular phrase. That also means that I know or at least have a very good idea of how that phrase should be played by actual musicians on the actual instrument. That seems kind of obvious, but it really puts me into a certain mindset while working on the MIDI programming. All those articulations in the library have certain names and are intended to do certain things. But that doesn't mean one cannot use them for other things, so I like to ignore all the names and and obvious purposes of those articulations sometimes and just listen to their sound and exploring their possibilities to get again the best possible solution for a certain phrase that I want to program. And with that approach I could end up with a result like this or the things you heard before where nearly every note in a phrase uses a different articulation, be it different short notes be it dynamic notes, be it sustains, legato, runs, whatever, whatever is available to you. And that's also one of the things I like about Iconica. It has a very well thought out set of articulation. It's, it's not too much to get lost or distracted, um, but at the same time it offers enough variation to, to really create good phrasings. And it's also quite consistent amongst all the instruments. You have those different short notes and dynamics for every woodwind, brass or string instrument. Okay, let's move on to the next section. that hard hitting timpani notes lead us right into the first theme again played in a quite heroic fashion by the horns and the whole brass section let me just isolate the brass here for you so this is the horns on top a trombone counter harmony line and an octavated bass line played by tuba and euphonium <laughs> And then I have this little schmaltzy trumpet solo to repeat the French horn melody before. This is again a good example of the use of the different articulations. Let me just play the, the horns for you.
when it comes to legato patches i can also state that the intervals the, the true legato interval connections should not be overused so for example in this passage the first three notes are connected and then you can see there's a little gap and then the second bar is connected again this is another matter of phrasing actually so there's no right or wrong here but something to think about if i just close this gap and let the horns play uh, legato slurred legato through this whole passage i think it loses a bit of clarity and of direction <laughs> It just slurs its way through the whole thing. And it's so much nicer if we have this little gap. And I think this is also something a brass player would do naturally in a situation like this. Okay, this section might also be a good opportunity to take a look at the percussion. And as you heard before, we start off with timpani have some tubular bells, drums, and later more mallets going on to support the orchestra and add some hopefully interesting colors to the thing. Let's also take a listen to the strings. They play bass lines and rhythm and harmony in this section and also have some ornamentations with trills on this uh, horn and trumpet legato part. <laughs> Let's also take a listen to the woodwinds. So, as you might have noticed, for this rhythmic passage I have the staccatissimo going on. And then for this little 16th repetition I quickly switched to the actual repetition articulation that was recorded. So this is a tempo sync to your DAW, so it will always sound rhythmically right. And you can just have that one playing for a quaver and then you get this little 16th note repetition, which often sounds much nicer and more realistic compared to doing that with the staccatissimo samples because you really have this effect of the player, a very fast single tongue or in fact double tongue technique to play this, which you can only capture in, in the context of a repetition. In this next section, this is also a technique I used quite heavily, for example, in the strings. And later on I also have that in the trombones. Um, and also tuba and euphonium. So let's listen to this section as a whole. There's also a lot of snare drums going on. By the way, this is also a neat thing about Iconica. You actually get four different snare drums and they also have four set of articulations. So throughout my track, I decided to use different snare drums for different occasions because they have different colors. And also sometimes I double them so to let two drums play at the same time.
some things to be noteworthy here. This is um, a case where I use the playable runs of the flutes. Let's just isolate them. So this is a case where I really needed those kind of smeary, slurry, legato runs. I also have those kind of runs uh, in the finale and the strings. But I wanted to point out that in this part, I think a playable run articulation gives me a better result compared to a solution with short notes. We can just take a listen to that as it would sound with the staccato, for example. It's not too bad. Staccatissimo. This sounds quite nice. And that's a choice you can make if you want your run to be played non-legato. But as I said, in this case, I wanted this typical smeary woodwind run. So I used the playable runs articulation. Okay, let's listen to the brass section in this part. We start off with trombones and trumpets playing the theme. There's another run here in the trumpets. In this case, I really like the staccatissimo attitude of, of that little run. After this section, we have a whole solo passage for the percussion, led by the timpani, which is, I think, by far my most favorite percussion instrument, and maybe even, maybe even my favorite orchestra instrument, I don't know. Sometimes it definitely is. So I love timpani and I love the timpani in, in Iconica. It really has the right amount of bite and the right amount of body. It, it's not too bass or low mid heavy to, to make your mix muddy, but it also doesn't have too little of it. So it's, a, it's very nicely balanced. <laughs> Basically, the section is a kind of duet between the timpani and the toms. We just isolate those two instruments. And then there are some accents going on from bells and other drums. Yeah, and after that we have another repetition of the heroic horn theme we heard before, but this time with a different end. Again, let me just play the individual sections for you. Now the woodwinds. And finally the strings. Then after that, to, to make a nice bridge to the finale, I thought it would be a cool idea to make a little parade of all the sections of Iconica. So I start with the brass. Then the woodwinds play. Then I have the strings. And 
and finally the percussion. So let's so let's listen to them all together. Okay, in this very busy finale, I think I try to squeeze everything in that is possible. So let's let's listen to that section by section. Let's again start with the brass because they are leading here as they did almost the entire piece. Um, I start off with trumpets and horns. <laughs> And again, especially this last chord um, is something that's very difficult to pull off if you don't have those dynamic articulations. Uh, what I basically did here is this standard forte piano crescendo thing that you are very familiar with in uh, all kinds of film music and also classical music. And that's really something that benefits from the forte piano sample in the beginning and then blending over to the crescendo. Also arrangement or orchestration wise, what I did here, let me just let me just isolate the trumpets. I start off with the trumpet section only, then the solo trumpet came, comes in with two voices and then in the repetition of this fanfare one octave above, I have both the solo trumpet and the ensemble play the unison line and then when they split into the chords I gave the top line to the trumpet ensemble to really get a thick sound out of that C. Um, maybe we imagine we have an ensemble of four trumpets, give the top note to two trumpets and then the other voices to just one. Um, those are three trumpets in the section but you know, I don't care too much about that. So let's just listen to the trumpets here. Okay, let's move to the horns. Same concept, having the the top line on the ensemble and the harmony notes on the solo instrument. And also some trill ornamentations to again add a bit more excitement into this finale. Okay, now let's also listen to the low brass, the trombones, euphonium and tuba. Okay, let's move on to the woodwinds. They play some some runs, flourishes, and also harmony. And the lower woodwinds uh, double the bass lines, which you heard in the brass before. And here, I also make use of the trills and the dynamics. Those are the strings. Here we finally get to the point where I used the playable runs patch in the violins, so let's just listen to that. So you can hear they really bring in a nice little energy and help the trumpet fanfare to, to jump right in your face. And then there is some rhythmic and harmonic function going on. The low strings double the bass and lower harmony voices of the winds and the violins try to bring even more excitement to the table with some 16th note patterns there.
uh, this might also be a little trick worth to point out here for example in the violins this time i did the repetitions manually because i really like those pointy spiccato samples for that and if you look closely you can see the the first note of every little repetition is quite on the beat, quite on the grid. And then the second one is, first of all, played more quietly, as you can see here in the velocity. But it's also a bit too early. And I think this is, with very fast repetitions, it's always something I think I hear in, in real recordings. The... Not particularly if you have a very long repeating pattern, which is that, 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 and going on. But if you have those little double strokes, I always think the second note is maybe a bit early. Um, let's just listen to the difference here. Sounds really good in time, but I think this one is better. It has a little more forward drive to it, a little more energy. Okay, and let's also not overlook the percussion. They are also quite busy in this section. Let me start with their uh, parade solo and then I play it through to the end. The melodic percussion instruments double various voices in the winds or the strings. We have the drums, timpani and piatti to emphasize the final crescendo and final chord of the, of the piece. So let's listen to this one again with the whole orchestra. <laughs> Okay, let me also talk a bit about those gray tracks over here. Those are, as I said in the beginning, my sketch and composition track. For them I use the Ensembles library of Iconica. And I think this is a really great tool for sketching and composition, because you can really play or program one section at a time, you don't have to worry about individual voicings and too many articulations and that kind of stuff. And at the same time it's very nice to have an ensemble library of the same orchestra where you also have the individual sections and instruments because then after you did all your composition and arranging stuff you can simply copy over the parts to the individual instruments or perform them again and it will not sound too different especially when it comes to the whole space and impression where the virtual orchestra is happening. So let me just play you some excerpts from the, from the demo, just with those ensemble tracks over here. <laughs> So that's basically my sketch pad where I laid out all the parts and I didn't worry too much about uh, individual articulations. Um, I even didn't, for example, in this parade section, I didn't take the time to switch between, uh, between staccato, marcato and other articulations because I would adjust that on the individual tracks anyways. So, and this is quite a good workflow, I think, to be able to play or program full section at a time in a single track. It also makes the editing afterwards easier if I want to move some things around, transpose stuff or switch it, switch it up between sections. And then when that's ready, you can keep it uh, if you're already satisfied with the result or you split it up into the individual sections if you have them available. Let's just play some more of those. Maybe we start here in the string. 
in this little string polyphonic thing. was my process of making this track. I really had a good time working on it. And I also really like the sound of Iconica. Especially the room, that mid-sized stage at Funkhaus Berlin, I think has a very nice punchy sound to it. And Iconica actually manages to evoke a quite convincing virtual orchestra sound even when the music gets very busy and excited. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got something useful out of it. Have a nice day.